Hey, welcome to Sweden. This is the number one rape capital of Europe. Some say that this is because Sweden is very progressive and aware of destructive patriarchal norms, which is why our definition of rape is broader than in other countries, and more considerate to the victims. Others say that it's because of our massive levels of immigration, where we import thousands of people from countries in the Middle East and Africa, places that don't really have the best views on women's rights. But it doesn't matter who is right. We will never know who is right. Because we aren't allowed to talk about it. Here in Sweden, everything is considered racist. We now officially have the highest level of immigration in relation to the population here in Europe. And yet it's considered racist to suggest that we should decrease immigration. Even though there's a lack of housing and has been for quite some time. We have an increasing number of immigrant beggars on our streets. And yet it's considered racist to suggest that we should ban the begging or try to get their own country to take care of them. I know that the definition of racism doesn't really apply to people asking for money. But it doesn't matter. This is Sweden. Everything is racist and nobody ever has to explain why. Because the power lies within the accusation and not the facts. Our former prime minister said that Sweden belongs to the immigrants and not the ethnic population. That it's what the immigrants make of Sweden which is Sweden. In another interview he said that every development of Swedish culture has happened thanks to outside influences. And that Swedishness in its primary state is just barbarism. As if everything positive about Sweden is only thanks to immigration. And that Swedes have only contributed with oppression and madness. This fucking asshole ran the country for 8 years until 2014. He also used to be the head of the Conservative Party. Do you think that perhaps the new head of the Conservative Party is any better? Uh, no, not really. This is what she had to say about Islamic State terrorists. We need to look at how to prevent radicalization amongst the youth. The important thing is that there needs to be fewer who can become victims of violence. If you get recruited as a terrorist to practice lethal violence, then you too are a victim of violence. <laughs> The former leader for the Social Democrats and our current organizer against terrorism and political extremism has said that Swedish people have no culture, no history, no identity. Only immigrants do. And that Swedes have to be integrated into the new Sweden. Because the so-called old Sweden isn't coming back. She has also said that there's too many white people in her party. And that if two people who are equally qualified apply to a job where there are few immigrants, then the one named Mohammed should get the job. Because in Sweden, it should be considered a plus to be non-Swedish. This is also the same woman who thinks it's a good idea to rehabilitate returning ISIS terrorists with jobs and therapy and housing. It's pretty amazing how both the right wing and the left wing seem to hate Sweden and love terrorists. They view jihadists as innocent victims who just turned to terrorism because Sweden was so racist. So they just need to be cuddled into redemption and everything will be fine. Help me America, I'm scared. The Swedes are the most self-loading people on the entire globe. I have never come across a country where nationalism is one of the biggest taboos. To the point where it's considered to be racism. Because if you love your own country and your own culture the most, then you don't love other people's as much. And that's not equal. That's not progressive. But nationalism is only ugly when Swedes express it. When immigrants express a desire, a will, to preserve their identity and their culture, then it's charming. Because remember, they are the ones with the culture, not the Swedes. 58% of the Swedish population now think that immigration is too large. And yet only one out of the eight parties in parliament want to decrease immigration. Most of our politicians and journalists don't live anywhere near the multicultural ghettos. They live in all white, all Swedish areas. And yet they are telling everyone else that they need to accept the multicultural dream. When the only foreigner they ever meet is the Arab making them a pizza in another neighborhood. Malmö is a Swedish town where Swedes are technically a minority. Because little more than 50% of the population have a foreign background. At the same time, this is the town that Jewish people are running away from because they don't feel safe there anymore. 
It has a high amount of hate crimes against Jews. And it's not white Nazis that are responsible for it. It's immigrants from the Middle East who decided it's a good idea to hate all Jewish people for what a small group of Jews in the Israeli government are doing to Palestine. But you know what? Nobody really wants to talk about that either. They don't want to acknowledge that immigrants can be racist towards each other. Because that would ruin the political narrative of immigrants as oppressed and Swedish people as privileged oppressors. What must be done so that it doesn't continue at this level that has been done in the last 15 years that you are Förutom det som redan är sagt nu så skulle jag vädja till alla religiösa företrädare och alla politiker och media och opinionsbildare att inte vara rädd för att tala om var hoten kommer ifrån. Att kalla en spade för en spade. När det är högerextrema som hotar oss, då är det inga problem att säga det. Men när det är islamister och olika muslimska grupperingar i Sverige, då blir man genast mycket räddare. Och här hoppas jag att vi gemensamt, ledare, företrädare för de olika grupperna, vågar stå upp och säga att det här är oacceptabelt. Mm. But do you know what the most amazing thing about Sweden is? We have immigrants who are conservatives, libertarians, right wing and so on. It is not uncommon for these to be called house niggers or Uncle Tom by the political left. Because in their leftist minds, right-wing politics strike the hardest against minorities, such as immigrants, blacks and women. So if you're an immigrant and you're right-wing, then you are a race traitor. I too have been called a house nigger because I refuse to be a cultural relativist. Because I think that Sweden's immigration policy is absurd and needs to change. Because in addition to higher immigration than we can handle, it is also considered racist to demand that immigrants should assimilate. Like, for instance, the greeting quarrel. An incident where a radical Muslim was supposed to work an internship at the integration unit. But when he showed up, he refused to shake hands with his boss, because she's a woman. Apparently his religion forbids it. She informed him that he had to be able to shake hands with everyone when working there, because it's customary as a greeting. But he got offended and reported her to the discrimination board. Before his case was even tried, the town politicians paid him 30,000 Swedish crowns to settle the case and drop the charges. Apparently it's discrimination to not allow an immigrant to discriminate against women. And as I'm sure you can guess, the feminists were nowhere to be found when this happened. Funny how the people who love screaming about everyday subtle sexism are nowhere to be seen when it comes to the most blatant sexism. But hey, that's cultural relativism for ya. I came here as a war refugee when I was a child. My family fled the war in the Balkans. I am very grateful for my chance to a new life. And of course I would like every single war refugee in the world to get the same chance that I got. But there simply aren't enough resources. So I would like if another country could take them in instead. A country where they have a better sense of responsibility. A country that doesn't have as high immigration. Countries where the migration board doesn't give citizenships to asylum seekers who already have a residence permit in a different country, or asylum seekers who have no papers whatsoever. Or why not that case where an Arab shot someone dead in Lebanon and decided that he wanted to apply for a residence permit in Sweden because he didn't feel like going to jail and eventually had it approved by the Supreme Court of Migration because he was at risk for inhuman or humiliating treatment in Lebanon. Countries where the politicians aren't afraid to stand up for values such as equality, secularism and humanism. You see, our politicians hold everyone up to these demands and standards, except for immigrants. It's more or less allowed for immigrants to be racist and sexist and nationalist. So if you ask me, when it comes to immigration, I think that we need to click pause for a second and figure our shit the fuck out. And if that makes me a house nigger, well then loudy boss, allow me to shine your shoes. At least I'm not the only one. This newly arrived asylum seeker asked the same thing many of us have been thinking. Why are Swedish politicians taking in so many immigrants when there isn't even housing and jobs to go around? Mm -hmm.
مستغرب غريب يعني ما في بيوت ما بعرف يعني يعني ما بعرف شيء غريب انه بسمع خبر انه هن على استعداد لاستقدام 50 الف لاجئ ولا 100 الف بعام 2015 طيب ما في روبوت يعني انا مستغرب انه اللي قالوا انه نحن بدنا نستقدم لاجئين بعام 2015 هذا العدد هذول نفسهم ما بيعرفوا او ما سمعوا باللي عم يقول ما في بيوت يعني عرفت كيف او انه My videos up until now have all been in Swedish. They do have English subtitles, so feel free to watch them. But subscribe, because every now and then, every once in a while, I will be making a video in English to show you all the absurdity taking place in the Mangina capital of the world. Because you see, Sweden is what Tumblr would look like if it was a country. Whew.